Hi, welcome back to my channel. I am doing this book review video maybe six months before you will see it. I'm doing it now because I read the book three or four days ago, but the publisher wants my review or any reviews to be held until publication day. Um, I do. I have checked Goodreads, and there are about six or seven reviews. But since the publisher is so kind, and by the way, the publisher is St. Martin's. Since they are so kind to send me this arc months before the release, and they do this with every single in-depth book, they've been doing it for about seven or eight books, I'll honor their request. The other reason that I'm doing this video so early, or the main reason, is because since I just read it a few days ago, by the time September rolls around, I think I will have read maybe 150 more books, 200 more books. So specific details of this book are going to slide further to the back of my mind. So I'm going to push my table back just a little. I feel like I'm too close. Okay. Now, this is book number 55 in J.D. Robb's In Death series. Now, most of you know that J.D. Robb is the pseudonym for Nora Roberts. I do read about one of her titles in the Nora Roberts books every year, and I read one in death book every year under the J.D. Robb title. This is number 55. I have read every single book as well as every single uh, novella. So I've read 60 or 61 of the J.D. Robb in death books. So let's start off with the blurb, which I'm getting to you from Goodreads on my tablet. And it says, The New York Times best-selling author presents a gripping new thriller that pits homicide detective Eve Dallas against a conspiracy of exploitation and evil. New York 2061. Now, side note. This is a futuristic mystery thriller, thriller, a cop thriller. The series started in 2058. So now it, in book number 55, it's three years later, 2061. To continue, the place called the Pleasure Academy is a living nightmare where abducted girls are trapped, trained for a life of abject service while their souls are slowly but surely destroyed. Dorian, a 13-year-old runaway who'd been in prison there, might never have made it out if not for her fellow inmate, Mina, who hatched the escape plan. Mina was the more daring of the two, but they'd been equally desperate. Unfortunately, they didn't get away fast enough. Now Dorian is injured, terrified, and wandering the streets of New York, and Mina lies dead near the waterfront while Lieutenant Eve Dallas looks over the scene. Mina's expensive, elegant clothes and beauty products convinced Dallas that she was being groomed, literally and figuratively, for sex trafficking, and that for whoever is investing in this high overhead operation expects windfall profits. Her billionaire husband, Rourke, may be able to help considering his ties to the city's ultra-rich, but Rourke is also worried about the effect this case is having on Dallas as it brings a rage to the surface she can barely control. No matter what, she must keep her head clear because above all, she is desperate for justice and to take down those who prey on and torment the innocent. Now, for a little bit of backstory, Eve and Dallas are kindred spirits. Eve was a severely abused child until she got to a certain age. I'm going to be somewhat vague in case you haven't read even the first book or the first several books in the series. Rourke, on the other hand, may not have been abused, but he did not have a life of comfort. And he went through a heck of a lot with his family, had a lot of trauma in his family, and he became the man he is because he started off on the wrong side of the law but now he's on the right side of the law as a billionaire and as the husband to Lieutenant Eve Dallas. Fast forward decades, and they found each other a few years ago. As a matter of fact, he was a murder suspect in Naked and Death, the first book in the series. Okay, 
Eve and Rourke have a love for the ages, a, an incredible love. That's what makes these books so good. Yes, each case that Eve works on or her and her team work on are always compelling, thrilling, page turning, twists and turns and so forth. But to me, the salt of the earth of this, I, I can't think of a good analogy, but what makes this book work is their relationship. Now, as mentioned, we have Dorian and we have Mina. They're both in prison at the same location. Well, they hatch a plan to escape. Sadly, however, like the blurb says, they don't get out in time. In fact, only Dorian survives the escape and Mina is killed. Now, there's a stark difference between the two girls. As a matter of fact, although both gorgeous, beautiful 13-year-olds, they're, every other way they're different as night and day. One had loving, caring parents in a stable home and was going to a good school. Another had a neglectful parent and was a runaway. One was one race, one was of the other race. So that's a factor as to why these two girls ended up in the situation that they did. But as Eve and her team start to really dig into why Mina was killed and what she was wearing when she was found and how they found evidence that there was another girl out there named Dorian, it led them to realize that there were a lot of little girls and children of both sexes that might have been in the same predicament. Given the fact that Eve came from abuse herself, she takes on a very personal investment to this case. Not only does she want justice for Mina, but she's determined to find Durian alive. As a matter of fact, she wants whatever happens, she wants Durian to have somewhat of a much better future than she might have had um, from the get-go. Now, Eve totally invests herself in this case. And how deeply she gets invested, I won't really go into that because I don't wanna give you any spoilers because all I want to do in this video, even though I'm making it six months before you'll actually see it, is I want, I mean, Eve wants justice. And I want as, as a re responsible reviewer, I want you to read this book but I want you to do more than read this book. I want you to read this book, the series in order. And like I said, this is book number 55. But if you haven't even read the first book, go get Naked in Death. As a matter of fact, I will pop up a cover to Naked in Death, although the covers do change over the years, but I will pop up a cover to Naked in Death in this video. But get Naked in Death, start it. Um, I got most of these from one of my libraries. I'm not sure if it was Hoopla or Overdrive. Um, and then I got the last several from the publisher directly. But in any event, find these books, grab them, even if you have to go to a used bookstore because they are excellent, excellent reads. Now, since I'm reading, I read this in March and it doesn't come out until September. It'll probably be October before I get book number 56, okay? So when I get book number 56, book number 55 will have just come out. But then I will have to hold that review till March of next year. So you see what I'm saying? I get them six months early, and then you get them when they come out. And I love the publisher, St. Martin's, for sending me this. As a matter of fact, when I get word that the newest one is out, I, all I have to do is pop an email and boom, they send it right to me. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I want you to love it too. So that is Desperation in Death. It, like I said, April, excuse me, September 6th. So I put this video up. I will schedule it on, on YouTube to go up on the 6th. I don't know what life is going to bring me between now and September 6th and even if I'll be making videos, but let's hope that I will. And if so, you'll see this one. All right. Bye-bye.